Today we're going to be diving into the world of PS1 style horror games, and I want to start getting into the subject matter with the game you're seeing on screen right now. It's not necessarily a horror game, however it highlights something I think gives these kind of games their charm. Ambience The objective of this game is to find four cats, although it would have been nice to reach this goal, I found myself getting lost in the strange yet oddly beautiful world of Nekoyume. When I play this game, I feel like I'm on a different planet, one where all of its inhabitants are cats and everything is just cats. The music accompanying the worlds feels transitional to me in the sense that it doesn't feel like it's happy nor does it feel sad. It makes me feel like something may or may not happen and since nothing attacks you, I feel a sense of ease and like I can take my time absorbing everything this world has to offer. Liminality Before we define this word, allow me to introduce you to anthropology, the study of human societies, cultures, and their development. In anthropology, liminality is the quality of ambiguity or disorientation that occurs in the middle stage of a rite of passage. Upon discovering this space world with a tunnel you initially enter said world through, to the glass bridge which gives you the option to cross to the other side, to the cosmic surroundings, to this world being devoid of any life, it made me think of Dreamcore in liminal space imagery. Speaking of which, let's talk about that real quick. Now I'm sure you've probably heard of these types of images and you're probably sick of horror YouTubers talking about them, but I promise I have a point to make here. I've selected three categories if you will, liminal spaces, Dreamcore, and Weirdcore. I'm going to quickly show you two images from the three categories and from there I'm going to give you my thoughts. To me, there's a sense of loneliness, something feels off. I associate places like these with people passing through and doing stuff. To see it empty feels wrong. I know I've never been in one of these places before, so honestly, I don't share that sentiment commonly associated with these images, but I do feel like there's a sense of the unknown, like something or someone could come out of the darkness. And if I were in one of these locations, I would probably have my guard up. Okay, I know this low-key kind of sounds corny, but just trust me, there's a point as to why I'm describing liminal spaces. Just bear with me, bro. As the name suggests, these dream core images seem like something you would see in a dream, especially this image. Being that there's a ton of dead grass surrounding the healthy patch. On top of that, the rainbow just adds that extra dreamlike quality to the image. And this image feels more nostalgic to me than anything. Lastly, let's talk about these weird core images. Although there's a lot of overlap between weird core and dream core, and the two terms are sometimes used interchangeably, I think there are some differences. For example, it seems more plausible that dream core images would exist in real life than any weird core images, which I would describe as a dream core image with a surreal element added. To me, these two images evoke a sense of mystery, and this one in particular taps into that feeling that we all have as humans, that feeling of uncertainty or the fear of not knowing. Now, the reason I brought up all of these images is because I'd consider Consider them all to be liminal spaces. Granted, some of them are more otherworldly than others, and depending on the image, it'll remind you of a certain memory or evoke a certain emotion, and that's precisely why these images and spaces that should be insignificant and should only be utilized to pass through are strangely mesmerizing. Bringing this back to Nekoyume, this entire game is pretty much a liminal space, and this game's greatest strength is existing for the player to be able to experience its ambience. One thing that makes PS1 styled horror games so great is exactly that, a sense of ambience. And how the environment immerses you into the world of the game you're playing. Without a good sense of liminality in any horror game, to me it might as well not even be a horror game, since they inherently play on humanity's fear of the unknown. This game is called Small Island Woes and the objective of this game is pretty simple. Lighthouse again, I see. And on to the lighthouse we go. The locals here are pretty kind, welcoming us and offering us food. But we gotta keep it moving and see what's up with the lighthouse. Doesn't look like there's much over here. What in the frick is this? Hmm. 
Well, it looks like our job for today is done and we can finally head back to our boat. Every week we make it a point to come here and see how things are going with the lighthouse. However, with the passage of time, things start to become strange. The fisherman looks disease ridden, the young boy looks like he's been through some stuff, the apples are all infested, and after we're done finishing our weekly lighthouse maintenance, right as we're about to leave, it's just a matter of time before your little boat sinks to the bottom of the ocean. Something is clearly up with this island. What exactly it is that's causing the locals to appear and act in these strange ways is unknown. However, in the weeks following, we see glimpses as to there being a foreboding presence on this island. It doesn't take a genius to know that there's obviously something here roaming this island. And hopefully we're not around to find out, <laughs> right? You're gonna die just for the sake of going through the motions, huh? Initially, I thought it was a singular dangerous creature roaming the island, but whatever this presence is has completely engulfed the island along with its inhabitants. And despite all of this, we still must complete our task. And so we push on, regardless of how we feel. With everything said and done, let's finally head back to the boat. And that was the end of Small Island Woes. It was short but sweet. This game admittedly doesn't have much to it, but it doesn't have to. If you ask me, I'd say this is more of an interactive art piece than your traditional video game. And that's obviously not to say that video games aren't art. However, I think this game in particular is telling us more than simply the experience playing through it. Every week for hundreds of weeks, we're tasked with the exact same thing without fail check on the lighthouse until by the very last week the fisherman says to us you're gonna die just for the sake of going through the motions and this all reminds me of burnout and how it can happen as a result of repeating the same task over and over again in 2021 when i uploaded my fast paced in a nutshell style of content is when i felt the most dread and burnout when creating content due to me wanting to express more experiment with new editing techniques and do more creatively however i was trying to chase numbers and attempting to hop on trends but ultimately I ended up dreading the kind of content I was producing. Even then, I would say I was passionate about my channel and making videos, but even so, creating the same type of content while wanting to take it to new heights ultimately left me feeling burnt out. One of my biggest fears in life is not achieving the goals I set out for myself before I die. I've always wanted to make video essays, but never had the faith in myself to make that leap until the beginning of last year, when I dropped my iceberg video. From there, the story of this channel would begin to change and finally the creative juices in my brain started to flow again and i started to feel passionate about creating videos again i have a point to make by telling you all of this but first i want to ask you some questions what killed us at the end of the game and did we even die well as you saw nothing on the island even touched us and if you ask me i don't think we died now maybe this is just me reading too much into it but i believe what us sinking in that boat represents is either us taking a leap of faith to leave the current situation we're in or us allowing the day-to-day -day repetition to completely consume us and at the end of the day it's up to us to change things 
Now I might be completely missing the point of the game and it can actually represent you helping out the channel on Patreon for only $5 where there's sneak peeks, exclusive content, uncensored cuts, or it can even be a subliminal message telling me to watch this vine for the 100th freaking time. All jokes aside, I think what aided in me coming to the conclusion as to this being the meaning of the game is the fact that this game is short and simple, and nothing is explicitly telling you what the game or even the ending means, and it's exactly for that reason I came up with this interpretation. Speaking of the game being simple, PS1 graphics are inherently simplistic, being low poly, and with this limitation, it's hard to fully mimic reality. Going back to the fear of the unknown, I think PS1 styled horror games can take advantage of the low poly graphics and its limitations to force the player to have to come up with their own conclusions, interpretations, and also leave the player feeling a sense of loneliness and isolation as they play, not only making them have fear of what may come, but also making them feel like there's no one there to help them in the process. These videos by Saltwater DVD highlight that sense of isolation, especially in strange liminal places. The environment the characters are in are of course in that PS1 style and to me it reminds me of being isolated in a place that's foreign due to once again the PS1 style of graphics being simplistic. Once again, I'd like to touch on PS1 graphics quickly, and I want to get abstract for a second as well. The world we live in is in 3D. Art is an imitation of our world and what's in it, and the art of painting is no different. There's major painting styles, three of which I want to briefly show you. First up, we've got realism, second, we've got expressionism, and third, we've got abstraction. If we replace these painting styles with styles of 3D art, realism would be something like Red Dead Redemption, expressionism would be something like Hello Neighbor, and lastly, I think these PS1 style of games would fit into the abstraction category, but the low poly shapes and textures and the way they're put together in a world suggesting something that exists in real life, however being just abstract enough for you to be able to draw your own conclusion as to what it might be or represent. With this abstraction, sense of liminality, and not knowing what might be around you in PS1 styled horror games, I think it all cultivates this sense of isolation in that feeling like nothing or nobody will reach their hand to help you. I know this footage isn't from a game, but these are videos made by YouTube animator Saltwater DVD who I've been following based basically since the beginning of my channel and after this video please go check out their channel and don't just subscribe and never watch their videos but please consider checking out their videos because they're really great and of course links will be in the description. This game is called Grandmother's Garden and we start off completely alone in the woods. There's a house behind us so let's check that out and see if we're given some sort of objective. Get Digging is written on the wall and we're given keys to the shed by our grandmother so I'm assuming we're supposed to find a shovel and get to digging. We now begin our journey to find the shed. On our journey, we see a couple of things, some sort of plant, a well, and after taking some twists and turns within the woods, we finally encounter what we're seeking. Here on the side of our grandmother's house, we find these spots of dirt where we're able to use our shovel.
The reason I wanted to showcase this game is because it highlights what we spoke about previously, isolation. And as we traverse the forest obscured in darkness with our only source of light being the flashlight in which we carry, it feels like something can just come out of the woods and attack us. And if that were to happen, not a soul would come for our rescue. Probably not even our own grandmother would notice as she sits apparently lifeless in front of the static filled TV. In the end, it wasn't man nor some sort of foreign entity or creature which took our life, but it was seemingly the garden itself, our grandmother's garden. Okay, so we've spoken about ambience already, we've spoken about liminality, we've spoken about fear, we've spoken about the simplicity of PS1 graphics and isolation among other things, but before we move on and begin to finalize, all of the games I mentioned in this video will of course be in the description, but also all of these games weren't made back in the 90s, they're modern indie game titles deliberately made in this retro style, and people make games in this style of course today because they understand what makes this style of game so great especially in the horror genre in particular we've already spoken about some of the qualities that make ps1 styled horror games great so obviously there would be a community of those developing games in this style as well as those who simply enjoy creating art in the style videos and even just looking at the art much like myself now I i'm gonna admit to y'all i have never touched a playstation or a playstation game in my life and before this video in fact I never even played a PS1 style of horror games. I've always just seen YouTubers play them. So I never got to experience great horror titles such as Silent Hill. And I've always been just so fascinated with this aesthetic, specifically in the context of horror. And I decided with this video to try my best to dissect what makes this style of game so great. And now I wanna showcase a game to you which plays on every single point I brought up in this video very well. And the game I wanna talk about is called Nun Massacre. We begin by getting out of our bathtub. I'm not sure where we are, but it seems old and dirty here. We then make our way to where the road ends, forcing us to get out of our car and jump over the barricade in order to continue our journey, whatever that is. We continue to traverse the rocky terrain until we find this building. With nowhere to go but forward, we begin to wander the liminal hallway in front of us. As we explore the abandoned rooms, we look for items that can help us to progress. We're not alone here, and I can't shake the feeling that in some place, somewhere, there's someone there watching our every move. We continue to roam the empty halls, searching every nook and cranny for something that can maybe aid in our exploration of this place.
but something is definitely here. So as we proceed, we've got to keep our guard up. The door closes and locks itself behind us. And that was just a little bit of Nun Massacre, and of course the game has so much more to it. There's a whole story I didn't touch on, there's an inventory system which is limited and adds to the feeling of always being on the edge of your seat while playing this game. Every single point I brought up in this video manifests with the game, and as you're playing through this game, you'll intuitively understand that because of the liminal unknown environment which surrounds you, and this is the reason you'll inevitably feel some sort of dread while playing this game. Admittedly, I'm not the type to react strongly to certain things. For example, I didn't cry when Ash died in Pokemon the first movie, but I can honestly say I did feel a sense of anxiety, especially when I got trapped in the small room or when I made the rookie mistake of falling into the wires. I don't know what the freak that was, but listen up guys. I've been working on this video for freaking a long time now. I've been working on this video on and off. I've been tweeting other projects and I believe this one is my best one and I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it was a little bit different you know, from my usual style of content. I know it wasn't as dark or whatever. It was a little bit more lightweight, you know, it was a little more, you know what I'm saying? A little bit more positive, a little bit more Mm, you know what I'm saying? Regardless, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much for all of your support. As always, I will always make it a point to thank you guys for just everything that you have done for the channel, for all the love that you've shown to the channel. I really, really want to start making longer and more in-depth videos such as this one. And I will not be able to do so without your guys' support. You know, I want to, I'm trying to make this my full-time job and everything. Um, so if you guys can, obviously there's no, no, no obligation, no nothing like that. I know I always promote my Patreon in every single video, but it is genuinely to help me try to make this a full-time job. So if you guys would like to, you can go on my Patreon, support me there for $5. There's of course, I'm, I, I want to also make the Patreon as best as quality as I possibly can as well. There's Patreon exclusive videos like archives and stuff. There's sneak peeks and 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 all other things, right? I have a lot of plans for this channel. I have a lot of plans for content to entertain you guys, to inspire you guys, to educate you guys on whatever subject that crosses my mind. Um, and I hope you guys enjoy what's to come. This is only the beginning of good things to come for this channel. I have a lot of plans for this channel in the very distant future and in the and also in the immediate future as well. I want for this channel to be something special. I want to build something special. And I want for through my videos, through my content and all that stuff, for there to be, I don't know, some sort of ripple effect that can hopefully help a bunch of people in some sort of way that's my dream and i know i'm pretty I'm, i know i'm being very vague when i say that just know i'm not in this for the money i'm not in this for the clout i'm not in this for any of that i need money to of course live and that's why i'm asking for patreon money and that's why i'm at that's why i want my views and subscribers to go up so i can have ad revenue or whatever but regard i i'm rambling on too much now the point is thank you guys so much and there will be much more to come and this will not be just another channel even though objectively that's what i am i hope to build something special here and i hope to inspire 
millions. That may sound freaking corny as heck, but I don't give two freaking craps, okay? That's how I feel, and that's what I want to do, all right? Once again, thanks, and I'll see you guys in the next one.